It's Monday. It's March 27th. And the word of the day is hoopatunatutitis, which is a Finnish word that means the act of falling onto the nearest couch with a contented sigh. Used in the sentence, the literal translation of hoopatunatutitis is bouncy cushion satisfaction. And that's why they're the happiest country. <laughs> so happy. Also, the democratic socialism. Yeah, probably. Helps. Yeah. If you only have five minutes left on your 15 minute lunch hour, it's not nearly long enough to sit down on a couch. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, but to be fair, I feel like a country whose demonym means to orgasm has an unfair head start in the happiness rankings. Anyway. That's fair. They do. <laughs> I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Congress takes on the Tickamatox. I make Eli listen to astronomy words. And we explore the burgeoning alt-right semen sector. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, welcome back. And in our pre-lead story, Um, a Republican state representative in Florida got tricked into reading the names Anita Dick and holding his cock during a hearing. (laughs) He said that shit out loud. That's the whole story, but it had to be mentioned at the top. Yeah, we don't do video, but Heath has been beat red and sweating this whole time Uh for the introduction. I was worried it was some kind of embolism. It looked like he had to shit out of all of his orifices at the same time. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. How do you read the first one? How do you read Anita Dick and then you're like, I'm going to keep reading this list. This is obviously a legitimate (laughs) list. (laughs) In our lead story tonight, in which channel is the Netflix news? TikTok CEO Shu Si Chu testified before the House Energy and Commerce Committee this past Thursday. And one thing is clear, whether or not TikTok poses a threat to national security, the people to stop it are not the House Energy and Commerce Committee, who spent the hearing asking questions that range from the racist to the stupid To the stupid and racist. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know what? I'm going to generalize one further and say that if anything poses a threat to the national anything, the people to stop it are not the house anything. Okay. (laughs) At least not until January 3rd of 2025. Mm -hmm. At the earliest. At the earliest. Yeah. yeah. So uh, first things first, Mr. Chu is from Singapore, which exactly none of the people asking him questions had ever fucking heard of. Wait, (laughs) you lost me. (laughs) So- I was making a little like compilation of the dumbest questions asked during the hearing while I was reading the transcript, and I had to stop writing down all the people who either said he lived in China or indicated that he was Chinese, because it was fucking everybody. It was every possible question. But perhaps the best example of this is when pirate captain Dan Crenshaw claimed that Chinese citizens must cooperate with Chinese intelligence if they are called upon and they are bound to secrecy, saying, quote, that would include you, (laughs) to which Chu replied, and this is his real response, I'm Singaporean. (laughs) (laughs) And Dan Crenshaw was like, exactly, China. Yes, floats right off the border of a country that borders a country that borders China. And yeah, right. So gee, like, at least be wrong correct, right? This would be like insisting that if you ask, they have to tell you that they're an undercover firefighter. Get it right <laughs> or wrongly or whatever. So you're probably wondering what kind of hard-hitting questions the Congress people had for Mr. Chu. Well, nope. uh, first up, yep, exactly. Uh, first up was North Carolina Republican Richard Hudson, who after an impossibly long exchange about whether or not TikTok connects to the Wi-Fi of your house, what? asked if it was, quote, <laughs> possible then for TikTok to access other devices on that home Wi-Fi network, end quote. To which Chu replied, again, almost exact quote, what? No, you're an idiot. (laughs) What would that even mean? Like it's going to show cat videos to my printer? (laughs) Okay, so you know how the light switch in your house doesn't control every light bulb on the fucking eastern (laughs) seaboard? Uh, It's like that, congressman. Yikes. But that's not all. As if asking Hudson to hold his beer, Georgia Republican Buddy Carter, my congressman, (laughs) asked, quote, can you tell me this exact quote? I'm not making this up. Can you tell me right now? Can you say with 100 percent certainty that TikTok 
does not use the phone's camera to determine whether the content that elicits a pupil dilation should be amplified by the <laughs> algorithm. Can you tell me that? What? End quote. Amazing. And- Okay, to be fair, though, yes, Mr. Chu could tell him that. (laughs) Okay, okay, follow-up question. I have an erection. Does TikTok know the dimensions of that (laughs) erection? (laughs) Tell me how much penis-wise I just like this video. Yes or no? And look, there there are legitimate <laughs> concerns about TikTok, right? Spying on journalists' phones, how much access to U.S. data its parent company ByteDance has shared with the Chinese government, which apps TikTok gets info from. All legitimate questions. But those were not the questions <laughs> asked in this hearing. What we got was political grandstanding and open racism from people who, on average, are too old to get a job at Arby's. <laughs> so... I'm going to leave you with a warning, once again, delivered by supervillain henchman Dan Crenshaw. This is how he decided to end his time speaking to Mr. Chu. Quote, The long-term goal of the Chinese Communist Party is the demise of the American power. Not a great start. And that starts with our youth. At any moment, they can demand all of TikTok's data be used to design an AI algorithm with the sole purpose of promoting Chinese interests and destroying our society from within. (laughs) You want to know why Democrats and Republicans are united on this? That's why we're so concerned. End quote. Yes. (laughs) Adding quote. Yeah. He wears an eye patch. He does. He does. And on that note, I think we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Manscaped. Oh, man. What, what's up? Nothing. It's just it's just razor burn again. Ugh, yeah, that looks rough. Yeah, every time. I need a new beard trimmer, but it's impossible to know which one to get. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Manscaped, man. <sighs> Manscaped, man, what are you doing here? Yeah, I thought Manscaped only sold, like, ball trimmers and stuff. Well, that's where you're wrong, Sally Sue. I'm back and better than ever, thanks to the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. It's the ultimate package that makes it easier than ever to craft your signature look. It all starts with the cordless electric Beard Hedger. The Beard Hedger is tough on hair, but smooth on your face, leading to single-stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. Ooh. Tell me more. Is that, I'm sorry, is that a stake in your pocket? This waterproof cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. Plus, the Pro Kit also comes with our four dermatologist-tested formulations for your post-trim care. This includes Manscaped Beard Shampoo and Conditioner, Beard Oil, and Beard Balm to Moisturize, Style, and Shimmer Your New Beard. Plus, the kit has three free gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissor to ensure you come off softer than Ronald Reagan on a war criminal. I'm sorry, was that a Grover Norquist reference? With a nice beard, your face is perfectly groomed, right? Wrong! You need to keep an eye out for those tough-to-trim ear and nose hairs. The brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 offers improved blades and skin-safe technology with a no-tugging guarantee. It hasn't been this painless to mind your manhole since Andy Rooney first invented poppers. I don't think Andy Rooney invented poppers. And now that your face is looking great, you must try Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 for the full body grooming experience. Good news, the Performance Package 4.0 now comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 and all of the other below-the-waist grooming products Manscaped is known for, so you can be smooth as a dolphin from head to toe as God intended. Yeah, we're not super religious here. Get 20% off and free shipping with our code Skeptocrat at Manscaped manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use our code skeptocrat always use the right tools for the job with manscaped how long are you back for they bought a full year worth of ads baby okay damn it and in 
how long before they have to pixelate their own state on a fucking map news? <laughs> Way the hell back in December of 1990, nine episodes into the second season of The Simpsons, the writers were tasked with coming up with a hyperbolic example of American prudery gone too far. And what they ultimately landed on was a parents group protesting a traveling exhibition of Michelangelo's David unless the museum agreed to put pants on him. <sighs> a near exact parallel to the story we saw unfolding in Florida last week. And look, I, I think too much is made of the supposedly prophetic powers of The Simpsons. They just had to do a lot of episodes. But nowhere near enough is made of the fact that our present reality is a literal caricature of the world I grew up in. Right, absolutely. But but quick, someone should Google if there's like a national disaster that turns everyone yellow because I think I know what's coming. <laughs> what... I do. Okay, if Florida replaced its entire public school curriculum with literally just watching The Simpsons, <laughs> that's better than what they're trying to do right it now. It is, yeah. yeah. They need to at least learn about racism. So, so here's the story, Th though I'm sure you already know the basics. On Monday of last week, the school board for the Tallahassee Classical School in Leon County, Florida, held an emergency meeting after parents could complained that sixth grade students were being shown pornography by the school's principal. And yes, the word pornography, pornography that was used in the complaint, which is amazing because we're the talking about happening? Michelangelo's fucking David. It's one of the most well-known statues in the history of stone. But despite knowing all of that, the board's decision was to demand that principal's resignation. Because of the pornography. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember the first time my mom walked in and I was looking at a very large sculpture that my dad made. It was an awkward moment. <laughs> That's tough. Well, so, okay, now, according to school board chair and man doomed to carry the name of a stodgy cartoon aristocrat his whole life, Barney Bishop the Third, Absolutely did... not. The no, third. That's his real mm -mm. name. Barney yeah, dude, the Third? Just drop the third, man. It was already rough. <laughs> Barney Bishop. Okay. Barney, you know how your dad and his dad were all named Barney, like the dinosaur of the Flintstone? Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. keep this rock a-rolling. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's run that back. It's been great. <laughs> yep. So Barney uh, said that they didn't demand the principal's resignation because she showed students a, uh, a statue dick, but rather because she didn't warn parents that she was going to show kids a statue dick and give them a chance to opt out of all of the statue dick observations. But one way or the other, a 27-year employee of the school just got shit-canned because some kid's parents called Michelangelo's David pornography, a stance that would be, as has been pointed out by many a meme over the past week, considered prudish by the standards of 16th century Florentine Catholics. <laughs> yeah. Any chance we can get a, like a Medici to stab these parents in the <laughs> ear with a hat pin? <laughs> I, we used to have a solution okay. for this kind of thing. <laughs> I like it. Also, Pornhub needs to make their site, when it shows up in Florida, just nothing but sculpture. <laughs> oh, That's yeah, all that's you right. get in Florida. All sculpture. Now, for the record, uh, Tallahassee Classical School is not a Christian school uh, in sort of a not touching, can't get mad kind of way. It's a charter school that hews to the curriculum of Hillsdale College, which is an explicitly Christian school. Uh, the publicly funded charter school was founded as part of a larger effort by the Christian College to open dozens of quasi-religious schools that could push back against what they perceived as the creeping liberal bias in education. Because, uh, you know, theory of relativity, from the perspective of the people creeping away from the facts, it looks like the facts are creeping away from them um, so <laughs> if ever there was a school primed to behave like a puritanical mob of cartoon zealots this was the school yeah just christianity with a mile in its mouth who said i could have an inch right yeah who said and look I, I know this story is an extreme but it's an important reminder of who we empower when we take these decisions out of the hands of professional educators Right, like I, I see a lot of hand wringing centrists offering sucker to bigots by considering only the cherry picked out of context examples from the fringes of the debate. But make no mistake, when you empower these book banners, you're not catering to you know, like parents who think that maybe a chapter on LGBTQ studies doesn't belong in a textbook about African American history or whatever. You're catering to cartoon villains who object to one of the greatest achievements in the history of art because it has a penis on it. Yeah. It's like a small penis. It's not even a big... It's, it's a pretty tame penis. You're fine. Heath, shut the fuck up. <laughs> that. I like that on our podcast. He's a grower, not a shower. Okay, it's fine. And in 
Getter Done News. Things are not going great for Getter. Nope. For those who aren't familiar, well, good job. Mm -hmm. Getter is one of several social media platforms created by and for alt-right lunatics who got mad when they got banned from the, the super woke spots like Twitter. <laughs> Getter in particular was founded by former Donald Trump aide Jason Miller in 2021 when he got mad about Donald Trump having his accounts shut down by Twitter and Facebook following that whole attempt to violently overthrow American democracy. Mm. Well, after two years of platforming domestic terrorists and horrible bigots, they decided to pivot the business plan a little bit. To come. What? The new direction involves becoming a marketplace for anti-vaxxer sperm that's not tainted by the COVID <laughs> vaccine. They're, they're pivoting to anti-vaxxer cum. Hmm. Well, you know, so they probably just looked at all the mail that me and Eli kept sending them and thought, hey, you know, when life gives you lemons, you know. It... <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're obviously going to circle back to the cum brokerage my, idea. My GPS says that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but first, a little bit more background. Getter launched on July 4th of 2021, and they immediately crashed when they got flooded with porn. <laughs> Great job, whoever did that. Later that day, they got it sorted out, and they relaunched as best they could, and then immediately had to shut it down again when a bunch of high-profile accounts got hacked, including Steve Bannon, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Donald Trump's fourth out of four secretaries of state during four years, Mike Pompeo. Then... Three days later, about 90,000 other accounts got their information hacked. <laughs> Not great. But eventually, Getter actually did start existing. And Steve Bannon, right then, called it, quote, the Twitter killer. He was very excited about Getter. I mean, to be fair, the Twitter killer did end up being a bunch of racist ideas wrapped in terrible code. It just had more <laughs> emerald money than Getter did. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Turned out the killer was inside the house, but yeah, he didn't know that at the time. <laughs> also worth noting, one of Getter's biggest investors, billionaire Gua Wenwei, just got arrested in New York City last week for his part in a massive fraud scheme and had a whole bunch of his money seized by authorities. Apparently, he used Getter to trick a whole bunch of his 900,000 followers there into investing in cryptocurrency that went absolutely nowhere. So basically, he's Elon Musk, except like, I'm done with my thought. And <laughs> while the FBI was still searching his Manhattan penthouse apartment, it burst into flames, which means either a giant coincidence or this guy rigged his own apartment with like remote control thermite like he was in an Alex Jones movie. <laughs> so, so Pretty sure it's that, the second one. So weird that Republicans in the House are looking for a Chinese guy with a social media company to racist at, and they looked right past this dude. So strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I'm just impressed he didn't accidentally blow his apartment up one day trying to find the input for the VCR. <laughs> <laughs> so all that being said, Getter managed to sign up about 3 million total users by the end of 2021. And thanks to Joe Rogan joining last year and promoting it, they're up to about 5 million users now. But literally none of that matters because they're losing money. 5 million idiots talking on your platform is not that big of a moneymaker. They're not making, you know, the big alt-right microblocking money like industry leaders, Gab, Parler, Rumble, and <laughs> Donald Trump's Truth Social. And that brings us back to the jizz biz, uh, My new nickname for sex, Anna, take note. <laughs> so executives at Getter spent the last few weeks working on a pivot from ethnic slurs to selling human ejaculate. They want to become the first online clearinghouse for anti-vaxxers who need to buy sperm, but without all the microchips and demons and 5G <laughs> that you get in sperm now. <laughs> Guys, hear me out. What if our figurative business model was our actual business model, huh? A <laughs> huh? bunch of right-wing jerk-offs, huh? So, according to Rolling Stone, two sources within the company told them that Getter is actually exploring testing requirements to guarantee the, you know, non-GMO, unvaxxed <laughs> purity of their sperm listings Obviously, that they're going for. Yeah. And the guy who just got arrested... He's been working on this 
middleman for cum idea since Getter got started. That's his like pet project. He claims to have already collected 6,000 ova and millions of sperm. He's convinced that COVID vaccines are going to cause mass infertility, which is part of the Illuminati plan to depopulate the planet. And apparently there's a whole community just like him, and they're working hard to stop this evil plan. Anti-vaxxer adherents to this theory call themselves pure bloods, and they're getting ready to be the saviors of humanity when we need them for a mass breeding program to repopulate the earth after we get depopulated. So wait, they're I'm going sorry. and fucking themselves in advance? This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> also, sorry, they named themselves after the bad guys in Harry yes, Potter? Yep. The eugenicists. Uh, y'all, yep. we need a name for our school board. How about the Legion of Doom? Is that taken? <laughs> also, I cannot skate by this. They're going to repopulate the world using millions of sperm? So yeah. average ejaculation, yeah. two to five milliliters, and a fertile person has about a hundred million sperm per milliliter of cum. So like so like at least one percent of one ejaculation on the low end of normal. That's such a <laughs> weird order of magnitude to offer up. Yeah. I like how, you know, you present that statistic a lot. It made perfect sense today. It fit right in. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we can use this one. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Bottom line, definitely looking forward to signing up on getter dot com or getter dot jizz or pastemates use pastemates guys there you go uber skeets nice nice that's good, that's good. eli you get in those websites you get in pastemates.com and uber skeets. i'm on it okay. I'm, i've never moved my fingers faster excellent excellent well whatever they call it we're definitely going to go on but we will not be doing any pranks related to tainted semen that would be mean and maybe illegal we not we won't do that or se- maybe sure. we could send them like some like Faux scientific studies saying that you could taste the 5G. Yes. In the <laughs> Mike Lindell's way ahead of us. <laughs> and in Sanderstan news, Wired editor Jason Cahey learned that there are some people with whom you do not fuck this week as the reaction to his bizarre hit piece on fantasy author Brandon Sanderson was so universally reviled that Brandon Sanderson himself had to come out to publicly tell people to stop dunking on the author. So, first of all, if you don't know who Brandon Sanderson is, uh, congratulations on all the sex you had in high school. (laughs) Second, he's a fantasy author who is known for two things. Being highly prolific and being super duper fucking nice. That's such a weird combination. Like, I feel like if you have one, you don't need the other, right? (laughs) And that's part of what makes this hit piece so bizarre, right? Because Kehi agrees. He just doesn't think Sanderson is a particularly good writer. And so he spends the article Jane Goodalling his way through Sanderson and his fans in the most insulting way possible. Real quote from the article. He sits across from me in an empty restaurant, kind of lordly and sure of his insights, in a graphic t-shirt and ill-fitting blazer, which he says he wears because it makes him look professional. <laughs> it doesn't. He isn't. Unless I'm imagining word... him saying this out loud during the interview <laughs> okay, yeah. as he's Wait writing for it. it down. Wait for it, Heath, because it almost is that. Unless the word means only believing everything you say is worth saying, Sanderson talks a lot. You're interviewing him. So- Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he Sanders keeps talks. answering every goddamn question. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God. Blah, blah, blah. Ask me a question. How's Jason doing today? You never ask. I can hear you saying all this. I'm just not answering. Go ahead. What's your next question? Sanderson talks a lot, but almost none of it is usable, quotable. I begin to think. This is what I drove all the way from San Francisco to the suburbs of Salt Lake City in the freezing cold dead of winter for, for previously frozen dim sum and freeze-dried conversation. This must be why nobody writes about Brandon Sanderson. Wait, so so hold on. You drove to the suburbs of Salt Lake City to see this guy, and you're surprised that he's boring? (laughs) He's a millionaire. He could live anywhere he wants, and he chose the suburbs of salt lake city it's impossible it's like physically impossible for that person not to be boring okay and i know you're saying sanderson he's known for being super nice but i want to believe he was just fucking with this horrible shitty journalist he was like oh you want to write about me yeah yeah okay i guess 
So come to the Panda Express at the strip mall just outside the city. No, not the good one. The other one. Come to that Panda Express. The one with the C health grain. <laughs> also, and I haven't seen this posted elsewhere. The article is fucking weirdly anti-Mormon. Now, don't get me wrong. I love to make fun of both Mormons and Mormonism. Kind of I don't my know, job. Yeah, I don't, I don't know a weird way to be yeah, anti-Mormon. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay. I mean, think I'm, about I'm, it. You've, but you've really here's the thing. KE it. doesn't point out anything problematic that Sanderson believes or problems with the church, how it's racist, how it's sexist. He just keeps saying, like, this guy's a fucking Mormon. Can you believe it? A Mormon. If you did a find and replace with Mormon and Jew, this article turns into a Kanye West Instagram post. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but like... If we had arrest records for Moses being a fraud and Judaism didn't let black people have souls until like I was a kid, I feel like Kanye's tweets would be substantively different, right? This is not exactly a (laughs) white fruit of the tree of life to white fruit of the tree of life comparison. That's all I'm saying. Uh, No, that's fair. (laughs) That's fair. Uh, Side note, Kanye West posted on Instagram on Sunday a picture of the 21 Jump Street poster with the caption... Watching Jonah Hill in 21 Jump Street made me like Jewish people again. (laughs) No one should take anger against one or two individuals and transform that into hatred towards millions of people. No Christian can be labeled anti-Semite knowing Jesus is a Jew. Thank you, Jonah Hill. I love you. (laughs) I know it's not related, but that's 100% true, and I have to talk about it. I'm sorry. If your problem with the Holocaust is that it would deprive us of a Channing Tatum buddy cop vehicle, you're still maximally <laughs> evil. You didn't move down. Like, there's no wrong reason to stop being a Nazi, but there are ways to do it that are significantly less right. Let's sure. Just say. Yeah. Okay. But counterpoint, Jonah Hill is really funny. He is. He is really, like, yeah, he's, true. He's, he's a really funny guy. Very good. Anyway, he's the best reason to like Jewish people again from Kanye, (laughs) is what I'm saying. It's weird the way I said it. I'm just saying, like, from Kanye, that's the best we could hope for. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, with an article this bizarre, there has been backlash. Questions like, what the fuck is this? And why did you spend two paragraphs of your article on how nice his shower is? Which... Kay has come out to say he's pretty sure is bullying. So, in spite of the fact that this dude wrote four thousand words about how much Sanderson sucks ass and his writing is stupid and he hates him and his family. The author took to Reddit this week asking people to lay off Kehi, saying, quote, Kehi should not be attacked for sharing his feelings. If we attack people for doing so, we make the world a worse place because fewer people will be willing to be their authentic selves, end quote. And can I just throw out there that if your authentic self is just shitting on a guy whose mild fantasy writing you aren't a huge fan of don't be that just do another be another just, thing e- eli that is almost exactly our jobs no ours our whole thing ours is different anyway got it <laughs> nope change your authentic self otherwise you might embarrass yourself by picking on mr rogers bad taste in sweaters that's all uh, that's i'm fair. saying that's, that's terrible, all i'm saying terrible taste in sweaters and in I Like the Mua Mua News. <laughs> Thank you. You ever finish a book just because you want to be sure exactly how much you hate it? No, we read the Book of Mormon, so yes. Yeah, no, well, I'm mostly I'm talking to the so, listeners with that it's question. It's almost yeah. exactly our job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so that was my experience last week when I chose to waste an audible credit on the book Extraterrestrial by Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb. Um, in it... Loeb argues that the uh, that Amuamua, the interstellar object that traversed our solar system back in 2017, was actually a stray light sail built by an intelligent species from another world. Occasionally. Because he would also spend a fuck ton of his time going off on long, pointless, autobiographical diversions like a conference attendee soaking up mic time at the Q&A portion. Oh, uh, this is more of a statement than an audiobook. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of that. <laughs> um, and, and of course, he had a lot of rants about how he's Galileo and the scientific establishment is the 17th century papacy. But on the occasion that he does make an affirmative argument for his case, it's almost exclusively the idea that no other object could explain the unexpected deviation that the object took when it passed close to our sun, which made it all the more satisfying when basically nine minutes after I finished that book, I started seeing headlines about how a couple of researchers have fully explained that deviation without resorting to little green men. Yeah, man. Like, so many things come in front of aliens when we can't explain stuff. I I dare say, (laughs) most things. uh, Yeah. Most things. Yeah. 
Sadly, the alien explanation is actually way less xenophobic than most of the other stuff people come up with. Sure, what they can't yeah. Explain. yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. But yeah, in this instance, just like, yeah, we don't fucking know was better than <laughs> aliens. So so first, the deviation. Um, as you'll recall, back in late 2017, the world was abuzz with news about the detection of the first interstellar object ever observed in our solar system. Uh, that is, the first time we'd ever detected an object in our solar system that was not gravitationally bound to our sun. So fucking exciting. I was agog, <laughs> Noah. <We're, yep. laughs> agog. Now, it was a galactic interloper, and, and you'll probably recall a bunch of images of this weird cigar-shaped chunk of space poop that accompanied virtually every story about it. Now, important to note, that image is an artist's rendering. We don't actually know what the object looked like because it was too far away for us to see it. Uh, and, and it was moving way too fast for us to catch up with it. So what we know about its shape is mostly gleaned from observing how the reflection of light off of it changed as it tumbled. So based on those observations, scientists determined that it was either cylindrical or disc-shaped. Hey, Noah, are you sure this guy didn't make up aliens because the story is boring? Okay. Your space poop is boring, <laughs> and I'm starting to go team aliens. All right. Yeah. And also, I get it. Like, when I see vague poop, I think super advanced aliens. Right? Sure. They're like, I, I associate yeah. those. Well, yeah, because, like, if you. you've ever read Arthur C. Clarke's uh, Rendezvous with Rama, the idea of an interstellar cylinder flying through our solar system, that's irresistible. But but apparently the idea of, a, like, more of a pancake-shaped object fit a little better with the evidence. Anyway, so as this thing goes by our sun, we expect a certain amount of motion. Uh, either the gravity of our sun is going to tug it in, or if it has a bunch of icy material uh, on it, like a, like a comet or whatever, the sun will heat it up, it'll outgas, and then it'll push away from the sun. But what we actually saw is that it yes. pushed away. <laughs> thank, thank you. You've got to find the humor where you can. Because it's poop shaped. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> Keep going, Noah. <laughs> I got you, boo. Thank you, bro. Outgas noise. So, but then we, what we actually saw is it pushed away from the sun without any visible outgassing, and that was legitimately weird, and it, it needed an explanation. So, Abby Loeb puts out a paper that says, you know, a stray light sail would have acted that way, uh, which, to be fair, is probably right, right? Like, and a light sail might be disc shaped, too. So, it would have been a fine, if not particularly useful thing for an astrophysicist to do. If he hadn't then followed it up with an entire book about how he was right and all the other scientists were just jealous of his awesome light sail hypothesis. Uh, in case any stupid people like me are listening, a light sail is a solar powered spacecraft that I wrote about 99 jokes about not being real. And then I had to delete it when I Googled it. There really <laughs> is real now, but according to an article that was just published in the journal Nature, there's a far more prosaic explanation that I don't entirely understand. I'll explain it, Noah, don't worry. <laughs> oh, thank you, bro, thanks. No, so the, the idea is basically that a, a water-rich chunk of gas gets exposed to a lot of cosmic radiation, which you would expect, you know, if it's in interstellar space for a bazillion years, and then that radiation releases the hydrogen from the water, but the hydrogen remains trapped in the ice. Then, when the ice warms up, even if there's not enough outgassing to be visible from the Earth, the additional hydrogen could account for the observed deviation. Or... Visible outcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Heath. Um, so, no, to be clear, I'm summarizing an NPR article that was summarizing the paper. I'm probably super duper fucking wrong. But the key is, it could have been hydrogen. That's a thing we know exists. Or it could have been an alien artifact, which is not a thing we know exists. So despite Loeb's sanctimonious invocations of Occam's razor throughout his goddamn book, it turns out that yet again, aliens did it is probably the wrong answer to the astrophysics question. Occam's razor? Because maybe you don't mention Occam's razor what, if you're doing that. <laughs> what could be simpler than interstellar life growing in an unknowable, undiscovered part of the universe <laughs> and then visiting before they did any other kind of communication? <laughs> so the theory is advanced aliens were like, hey, should we just go to their solar system and check it out? Or oh, here's the other idea, though. We could send them a vague poop thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking we ease into it, right? And look, I think it's important to underscore this. Even if it does require Eli and Heath's eyes glazing over as I stumble my way through the explanation, the, the, the key here is that this was the first interstellar object we ever observed in our solar system. The idea that we would know what to expect from its movement and that any deviation from that would require the invocation of alien intelligence is the exact kind of hubris that Loeb spent his entire book accusing every other fucking scientist of. 
And it's also <laughs> he uh, called himself Galileo. Anybody who's like, I am the Galileo. No, whatever yeah, happens nope. next, Not don't Galileo. shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's like saying Keats. But it, it's also hey. an important. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also an important reminder that anytime a book shows up uh, for a popular audience with the basic theme of everyone in science is wrong except me, it doesn't matter what prestigious <laughs> fucking credentials the author has. You should treat it with extreme skepticism. Indeed. And finally tonight, in Blunder Siege News. Fantastic. The Russian military made a big splash last week with a very important hire. Stephen Seagal. Oh, look out, Steven Ukraine. Stephen Seagal got hired by the Russian military. Yeah. He's been a Russian citizen since 2016, and now he's a high-ranking martial arts instructor for their armed forces. Jesus Christ. Seagal did a big ribbon-cutting ceremony with a comically small ribbon. So weird. For the Typhoon All-Russian Aikido Center where he'll be in charge of teaching a completely nonsense martial art based mostly on choreographed pratfalls, if you've ever seen anything of it. And in other news, Ukraine's military spent the entire week laughing and <laughs> yeah. So right. someone came to Vladimir Putin and they were like, dude, we're really getting our asses kicked thanks to these portable anti-aircraft missiles that weren't around last time in the Balkans. And he's like, I heard, get me the guy from Steven Seagal Lawman. I'm on it. <laughs> I'm on it. So I'm not clear on how Seagal ended up being so popular in Russia, but he is. He recently got awarded the highly prestigious Order of Friendship from Vladimir Putin himself. And during that award ceremony, Seagal announced that he's, quote, one million percent Russian. Uh, he's not. not how Nobody is. That's impossible. Yeah. Uh, he's from fucking Michigan, which I'm not feeling great about. <laughs> but regardless... He's going to make sure that Russian soldiers can easily take over Ukraine with wrist control and motionless throwing for the most part. And it's all going to happen at the new Jodo that sits on a huge piece of extremely expensive land just outside of Moscow, which was apparently just given to Seagal and his holding company with no bids. And just to make it extra fucking evil, that land was originally allocated for a children's cancer hospital. But they were like, nope, fuck those kids, wrist control center. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, from, from what I hear, Aikido and the Russian medical establishment are equally effective, so maybe there's not really a problem yeah, here. <laughs> right, well, and, and one way or the other, we shouldn't throw stones, because our country does that kind of land grab shit with churches all the time, and then gives them the cancer kids. So That's at least true, not, that's true. At least they're not throwing those kids around. Well, they might be throwing those kids. You know what? Never mind. Those kids are drafted. <laughs> <laughs> so the best part of the story is the unadulterated glee from the Ukrainian military. In response to the news, their Ministry of Defense tweeted, rumor has it that the Seagal style running technique is going to be included in the training. <laughs> Russian soldiers will now be able to run away from their position with weird hand motions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent work. The Ministry of Defense from Ukraine, they do amazing work with that Twitter account. If you're not familiar with Steven Seagal's uh, flaccid little baby arms <laughs> doing insane <laughs> floppy run swimming in it's every so one of his weird. movies, do yourself a favor. Check out any of the hundreds, literally hundreds of Steven Seagal running montages that you can find out there. <laughs> also, anything with Steven Seagal doing an Aikido demonstration yeah, is also too. priceless. Yeah. Uh, as to the running, he looks like his natural impulse is to do the Muppet, yay, run. But, <laughs> but like someone told him that was weird, so he keeps it like small. Right, lock your elbows and do it, man. Lock your elbows. And by the way, whenever we talk about this on the shows, we're invariably going to get an email or two from Aikido Defenders. That will point out how many militaries teach that bullshit. But like, like, let me preempt those with a reminder that 30 years ago, several world militaries bought bomb detecting dousing rods for sixty thousand dollars a pop and kept doing that for a decade and a half. Okay, Google the ADE six fifty one. Save me the trouble of emailing you back the Wikipedia link here. You you go ahead and Aikido us as hard as you want. <laughs> you right. I'm sure, like learning. Learning tumbling is good. There's like oh, elements yeah, yeah, of you're sure. doing some physical sure. thing, but Juggling. you're not winning fights with specifically Aikido ever. Magic. You could learn magic yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs>
So, yeah, that, that's the thing, though. I have no idea how a country that invented Sambo, which is a very real martial art for, like, winning real fights, how Russia, that invented Sambo, decided to embrace a fake martial art that gets beat in every single real demonstration by just a random guy punching the Aikido guy in the face right at the beginning of the thing and a contest. Which is also one of my favorite video genres. It's Check those out. Too, yeah. Bottom line, Steven Seagal is the greatest American spy operation of all time. Or he's just a guy who got choked out and shat himself in the one real fight he ever had. <laughs> but, I don't know. It's fun to talk about it. We're not making claims. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the new generous donors, you will be complimented next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. That would be actually pretty funny if his niece was Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Fucking canon. This is me literally deleting everything I wrote into season two. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Manscaped Man now. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.